I think it's one of the biggest overlooked uh, benefits of estate planning. Why aren't domestic asset protection trusts more common in the United States? I'm going to discuss that today, and it's all coming out of conversations I recently had in the last few days. Um, yesterday, I was asked two questions by two different people. I was having lunch with someone, explaining to them what it is that I do, how I help clients, and I told them a large percentage of what I do is focused on domestic asset protection trust planning, in particular in South Dakota. So this person was kind of, you know, they didn't know about South Dakota, so I explained that to them. It's interesting because I'm located in Texas and, you know, I explained that I work with clients throughout the country and even abroad. And a lot of that is spent helping them do these DAPs, Domestic Asset Protection Trusts, in South Dakota. So the comment was made to me, well, surely other attorneys are doing this or a lot of other attorneys are doing this. And I kind of shook my head and just said, no, not really. That's, that's what's kind of unusual about this. And then um, another question I got asked yesterday by another estate planning attorney um, was, you know, I explained what it is that I do and how I do a lot of domestic asset protection trust. And the first question was, that, so wait, you're, you're helping clients set up self-settled asset protection trust in South Dakota? And I said, yeah. And the next question was, well, are, are you licensed there? Are you licensed in other states? And I said, yes. And that followed up with, so you're helping clients in Texas with these South Dakota Asset Protection Trusts? And the answer is yes, I'm helping clients located everywhere with these DAPs. And the, the response that I received was, I didn't know you could do that. And, and I understand that sentiment, right? And so, you know, I grew up in this world of multi-jurisdictional tax and estate planning. So this has just kind of been my background and it's probably an unusual background for most attorneys to have, or at least most estate planning attorneys to have, because they deal mostly with clients who are located in their local community and they may not, that client may not have business interests or other interests or, or children or, or whatever it may be located in different jurisdictions. So there historically hasn't always been a reason to look at other jurisdictions when it comes to the best available laws or what we can do out there. So the interesting thing about these DAPs is that not every state has them. And I think that's another reason why they aren't as popular as they should be. Because the states that do, okay, so there's about 20 states right now in 2023 that offer DAPs in their, in their states, right? So they offer DAP legislation, DAP laws, DAP statutes. Most of these states aren't the most um, populated states. So California doesn't have them. Texas doesn't have them. Florida doesn't. New York doesn't. A lot of times it's these smaller states. So in in right now, the best trust jurisdictions for DAPs are hands down, South Dakota and Nevada. I prefer South Dakota because there's even other reasons outside of the DAPs that make it a better trust jurisdiction. And that's widely accepted across the board. And today's video isn't necessarily about that, but all of this, gets a conversation going that I think is really important and it is who can benefit from ADAPT? And the answer is anyone can benefit from ADAPT. It doesn't matter where you're located. It doesn't matter which state you're a resident of. You, you know, you have the same ability that businesses or corporations do when it comes to shopping around to figure out which states have the best laws to protect your assets that might be most tax beneficial to you that might provide you the best privacy, whatever is most important, right? So the same concept applies. And so we see that with the advent of these DAPs and they've really, really pushed trust legislation and laws into you know modern times, things have finally caught up. We've seen more progression um, and modernization of trust laws in the last 20 years than we have seen in the last I don't know, hundreds of years. So the reason ultimately that I'm, you know, the, the, what I'm trying to pin down here is that the reason I don't think DAPs are more important or even FAPs, Foreign Asset Protection Trust, I shouldn't say more, more important, more known, is because the best jurisdictions are very, very tiny jurisdictions. Nevada is a larger jurisdiction. Uh, Las Vegas is there. That's a pretty, you know, major, major city. 
um, at least in the United States. And so attorneys in Las Vegas and Nevada do a great job of marketing to the greater population these different benefits that Nevada Trust have. You see a lot of Nevada Trust companies there that are helping clients throughout the United States, throughout the world. Um, Alaska has been popular over the last few decades. Again, a, a smaller state, smaller population, not a lot of attorneys there, but you do see some really good trust companies there. We've seen it with Delaware. Delaware is a bit unique in that it is, you know, it's a smaller state, but it's here in the lower continental, unlike Alaska, and it is also, you know, ideally situated there on the East Coast, close to other major cities and um, a greater population, uh, a larger population of people. So people have become very familiar with Delaware as being a destination for corporate law, trust law. Delaware hasn't really continued to progress in the last 20, 25 years, like it perhaps had done in the 90s or even early 2000s. You've seen Nevada and South Dakota to continue to progress. And, you know, South Dakota, as a point of reference, has less than a million um, residents in the state. It doesn't have a lot of attorneys. And even if you're just looking at the numbers and the statistics, the amount of attorneys out of the greater population that are actually estate planning attorneys is very small. You might have some who dabble, but those who specialize in estate planning is even smaller. All of this is to get at why DAPs and FAPs and these asset protection trusts protecting, you know, wealthy clients as well as business owners, you know, celebrities, public figures are not more widely talked about. So I think as we continue to, to progress here into the future, we'll see more and more attorneys having conversations with their clients about asset protection. I think it's one of the biggest overlooked uh, benefits of estate planning, particularly trust planning, that attorneys aren't having conversations about. And it's a really shame, it's a big shame because you can protect your assets from creditors, lawsuits, malpractice suits, negligent suits, divorcing spouses, right? So there's a lot of, a ton of benefit that we can really, really take away from these dApps.